Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our final elimination match of the day. You're watching the Summit 3 Southeast Asia Qualifiers, brought to you by Beyond the Summit. I'm MLD. He is Gods. It's time for CSW, your Straya team, taking on Arcanis. Neither team looked very good yesterday, Gods, but it could have been an off day for both of them. All that matters for them right now is getting through this best of three and staying alive. Yeah. Two teams who seem pretty evenly matched, possibly based on the fact they both are kind of uh, not in the best form right now. And, well, they just played each other in a best of two. It was a 1-1 one -one draw, so this match will have no draws. This match will have a loser, will have a winner. We'll see who's going to survive one more day, or at least one more day. Hopefully a few more for whoever wins, but one team is getting knocked out. And CSW are going to go straight into the first pick, Chen. Something they were not allowed yesterday in either of their games. One of Godot's best heroes as well, so they're going to be pretty happy to at least get their hands on this in the opening game one se of the series. And we'll go for the Chen here early on now. Of course, when we see that Chen, Shadow Fiend is a hero that often comes out as well, but not yet. CSW going instead for the Beastmaster. Or a Very stretch, strong I guess. pushing yeah. strat, potentially. Does give you some lockdown versus the Queen of Pain, though there's, there's other heroes that do it a, a little bit better and more reliably. Now CSW going to ban out that Enigma. Seems they want to have the jungle farming edge, and Arcanus not wanting to get pushed down are going to remove this Lycanthrope from the game. There is still, I suppose, as far as jungling supports go, always the Sand King. That uh, It could be a possibility here for Arcanus if they want to go that direction. Yep. We'll see if CSW want to ban it out. Might be a little too greedy, I guess, against a team that's going to be looking to put a lot of pressure on and push down towers, potentially before Sanky even gets his blink, but once you get your blink, at least you've got a Sanky with some good AoE damage and a counter push initiative. So, see what CSW have in mind if they're going to be going for that all in type push. Some teams are doing some Luna in this kind of a push strat where you have the safe lane farming Luna to provide the aura and just. The bouncing glaives when you're pushing do insane amount of bounce damage as well, prevent blink daggers like well behind the tower and cause a lot of issues. It's Dr the music of Lesh ban though. That's he plays a good farming Lesh and this is great at pushing. Yeah, as far as pushing carries go, outside of the Luna, there there's all always like your your Drow Visage duo yeah, as well. That's a that's a good possibility. Would maybe put the Visage into a five position. Uh, you could also put the Chen there after the laning stage, but Somebody's going to be suffering a little bit, so we'll see if CSW actually want to commit to that. They they don't have to. They can definitely back off. They could even go for something like a Tinker if they'd like, and we, I believe we saw their Tinker yesterday. It did not end up working out They like their well. Chains Tinker, though. It's one of his best heroes, so we'll see if... Yeah, they, they ran it versus uh, MVP Phoenix. That's right. I was I was getting confused here because I saw their latest results for the, the MLG tournament, but yeah, they, yeah. they ran the Tinker. It was a disaster. <laughs> they got <laughs> destroyed. So I think, yeah, there's a few options where they go for like the pickoff lineup, use the Beastmaster Vision and get like a Boots of Travel Tinker or some kind of follow-up ganker, even get like a support like an Ink Champerish. And the other option is you go for that all-in push with something like a Luna. And uh, it's going to be the Tinker option. So All right. It's tinker it is. Last time they did nothing to protect this guy. He got no support and he yep. got slaughtered in lane. So I would like to see them prioritize making sure he gets his early farm a little more. Uh, to be fair, he, he overextended a few times, but regardless, when you pick a Tinker, the strategy is always surround. It's all always revolves around the Tinker. Yeah. You never like just, eh, we'll just throw a Tinker in, you know, if he does something great. If not, you know, it's no big deal. This hero is the crux of the strategy. They did win with this hero earlier today in their game one against Arcanus, so at least having uh, that kind of reassuring thing, uh, despite having a kind of bad performance with it yesterday. Yeah, so. I guess Arcanus, they, they saw it, so maybe they'll have a better chance at dealing with it. Queen of Pain was that MVP Phoenix hero that just wrecked the Tinker. Uh, just got a really fast Orchid, a fast Hex. Not the really the best hero to hunt him, per se. Uh, there was also a Drow backing the Queen of Pain up that game, so had a much easier time in the laning stage. I don't know if Arcanus will actually go for a Drow. They did pick up the Bristleback. Could be their off laner here. Uh, potentially, they even consider like a Wisp if they want to dual lane the Bristle back in the off lane. Could be their safe lane farmer, but I'm not sure how much a, a safe lane Bristle really brings to the table later on. It's always going to be hard yeah. to push in against CSW. It feels like you want someone who can scale a little bit better. It's not like Bristle poses a huge kill threat onto an off lane Beastmaster. That's going to push him out of the lane. They're going to go for a hard late game carry, and a carry that deals with Tinker fantastically. Dare I say it? This Spectre. is this is the Tinker counter, uh, along with something like a Storm also goes really well. Batrider, 
the other big possibility. Storm is still out there, but not Arcanus' hero at this point. Could even be a hero CSW, maybe, consider. But uh, that yeah. the Tinker and Storm duo, you're very reliant on those early pickoffs to to get some momentum and start snowballing before the Spectre can come Ten online. Seconds. I'm curious to see what music is going to be playing now in the carry role. With, uh, looking for one support, but you're just looking for that zoning support for your safe lane farmer, most likely. There are different options that work whatever, however well against Arcanus. But the CSW strategy is going to be largely dictated by what carry they pick for Musica. Uh, the hero as their last pick. Yeah, I, th I think we did. We see a storm yesterday. No, we did not. They he played a queen of the, pain. Uh, he played a really gyro. good queen of pain game. They're in the the gyro morphling ta one game. That trio, that that was. I feel like that the the first game where they lost with the tinker, their draft was actually fine. The the morphling gyro ta game was just a kind of a train wreck of a draft as well. But. Let's see what CSW you want to do. Like you said, I think you take your support now. You probably just hang off on that last core. Unless they have something very particular in mind to deal with this Spectre Bristleback. They are really hmm. thinking it over here. Taking an awful lot of time, CSW. Yeah. They, they have their reserve time, I guess. So this is this is where you, you use it. But yeah, it's, it's more like it seems like they're they're kind of like, hmm, what do we do? Yes, the they're Spectre. They're definitely thinking a lot was something they were probably not ex expecting to come out. Despite it being one of the Tinker Counts, it's just not really a popular hero at the moment. Arcanists have not run this hero once in their last 10 games, so yeah, I think it's it's something that catches them off guard. So Troll Warlord, so Musica going to be playing a good kind of fighting carry. Not really many heroes, that no heroes that benefit from this battle trance, apart from the Troll himself, really. It will be the Superman Troll, maybe, with the Chen Creeps and the Beastmaster. Yeah. But, but, yeah, like you said, yeah. just a troll. It's just, it's great in the laning stage. Also, pretty good against the Bristleback. Can zone him decently well, just because uh, he's got the kind of range, kites him around, has a, get just like one value point in fervor, and you get that attack speed stacking to help zone out. It really feels like a strong laning support is essential here. Like Skyrath, maybe the ban for Arcanus. They're actually going to ban the Zeus. Hmm. Worried about that global pressure from the, the Tinker, the Hawk. Uh, giving them the vision to set up kills and as well as the Zeus. I don't think Zeus would have been a very good pick. It fits really nicely in the mid to late game, but y you just give Bristle way too much in the offlane. You want to support that can. I really feel like it needs out. to be like the the Skyrath type of hero. Maybe a, a Witch Doctor would be okay. Yeah, something. Skyrath, Witch Doctor, both sound sound solid. Uh, other than that, the else. Lion is still in the pool as well, which is pretty good. Not quite as dominant as far as zoning goes, but has the lockdown for a Queen of Pain in the mid game. So, I think Lion would also be decent here so for now AA gets banned out that's gonna be a probably a good ban and the IO well, there we go you talked about wow. the bristle back in the lane stage and I'm actually so even though even though like it didn't really look like a, a like when they pick Spectre I feel like even though this is a global hero you're not really thinking wisp you're you're probably thinking something's a little bit like sturdier early on. The Spectre Vengeline is gonna be weak though, gods like That's something CSW that's... likely look to punish. Uh, they could chat they could gank that lane early with the chat. I mean maybe they even do like a troll yeah. plus one there, just let the Beastmaster kind of be sacrificed in the awful in the safe lane. I think that's a decent idea. I, it, Beastmaster just has to sit back, leech as much XP as he can, has high base armor so he doesn't take too much damage from the bristle back, right clicks and quill harass, so T to be honest I thought Arcanus was gonna get like a, a stronger laning support just Leave the Bristleback someone on his own. Yeah, he's going to struggle, but just make sure the Spectre has a good time. Remaining. Now I'm... It might, they might play musical lanes here. Maybe they juggle things. Ooh, this could be the aggressive support. support. Shadow Demon Chen. Very old school combination here. Yeah. Really good against Spectre. Soul Catcher, Demonic Purge, extremely potent versus that hero. And obviously, Spectre Illusions are a great thing to have on your side. And even if they do decide to just run the standard Beastmaster offlane, troll, safe lane, just Shadow Demon, this is going to be one of those occasions where Shadow Demon may look to smoke gank with the Chen. Typically, you don't have a dual roam support, it's just like your Chen off going ganking by himself while the one support zones out, but if you can go down bottom lane, gank a Spectre and prevent him from farming too well, that's going to help out a lot for CSW. And even if they don't, yeah, even if they don't kill him, just pressure the lane. What's Avenge Spectre going to do? It is a little worrying. They don't really seem to have the best lockdown for the Queen of Pain until they get the raw up. Like, if you want to try gank Quop early, it would have been better to have a Skyrath with a Silence yeah. or a Lion with the Hex Impale. Shadow Demon, unless you can disrupt into a Centaur stun, that's the only way you're going to gank and kill a Queen of Pain at mid lane. So, not exactly something easier or reliable, because you've got to get a Centaur for one thing. But hey, the focus may be less so on ganking the mid lane and more the other lanes. 
Well, that said, it is a Bristleback Wisp. Even if that safe lane's a bit weak for Arcanus, potentially, this off lane strong, they just face roll the game before CSW can even get their feet into the game. Let's see how it turns out. Draft's complete. We introduce the team. CSW on the dire side. This is, again, an elimination best of three. One team's going home. Tootie on the Beastmaster. Chains will be playing his signature tinker, Godot on the Chen. This time, Musica handling the troll. It'll be 3-4-3 three, three on the Shadow Demon support already, plopping down an Observer Ward. As for the Radiant team, we've got Bach as the Offlane Bristle. We saw his uh, Phoenix yesterday, I believe. It was very fitting for the hero. Boombax on the Wisp, but we might have a little clash here. Dave going to walk right into four heroes. ruh -roh. Slow Axe has come out. He's getting body blocked by Mighty Savior, who now <laughs> cuts and Ronnie daggers over the tree line. Well, the lane was already going to be a little dicey if they wanted to go aggressive, but... It looks like it was just going to be a Bawflame Beastmaster, so a freebie off the bat for CSW as we round out the introductions. Heinrich on your Queen of Pain, and in the safe lane, Mighty Savior the Spectre, and Dave on the bench. Some, some cool cosmetics coming out. I like the Spectre cosmetics. We'll take a look at those after this battle at top happens, but uh, it's going to be a disruption. They want to go in. They've already thrown out the slow, so it looks like Bounty Room will be claimed by your Wisp, so he can get that slightly faster bottle, but... Yeah, they all they were fairly close to getting both the bounty runes. If Arcanus were a little bit slower to make yep. their move there, could have been a first blood with a double bounty rune. Though the last time we saw that, the team that got it lost, so <laughs> it's not a guaranteed yeah. win anyway. So tooting this offlane is going to have a fantastic time. Boots and Oove level one with against six tangos as against well against a melee specter and a low range eventual spirit. This Venge is not going to want to trade hits with the Beastmaster. Beastmaster will just come up, and as soon as Beastmaster hits level two, gets a Quillbore in play, you're looking at kills to start happening. Although I do regret to inform you, he's got the terrible Coolboard cosmetic. Oh, mistakes were made. Can we unequip this for him? Yeah, please. <laughs> 2D, please. The other nice thing is uh, you're not going to have to worry about that Desolate Chen? so much either. I don't know if... Did Chen smoke down here or just walk down? Um, and got I down here one way or another. didn't actually see if he smoked. But this Beastmaster with a Chen down here is looking at I finding some kills early on. Maybe I feel like he it. probably just walked down, because he kind of knows what the lanes are. Like, what's Venge going to do? Venge can't keep him out of the lane, the jungle by himself. But maybe yeah. maybe he did use the smoke. So, 2D going to have a fantastic time. This is a lane that CSW want to win. They also will have a pretty even matchup at mid, although Queen of Pain blinking forward aggressively onto Chains, whose laser is on cooldown. But it's going to be a good off lane for CSW. The safe lane is going to be a 2v2, and I'd say... a Pretty even, maybe even slightly Wisp Bristleback favored lane, especially once the bottle comes out. Which well, unless you're getting so. those bashes on yeah. the tower. Poor Bach. Let's, let's get that RNG going, Musica says. Yeah, it's a strong dual lane. There's some kill potential, mm -hmm. even with the disruption. Like the the Bristle Wisp can just bottom lane. tank the tower and fight it out. Oh, Dave. So royally screwed. There'll be another hot duke in soon. Not even required. Godot, up to 700 gold, has his boots online. Well, gods, we talked about it. This Venge. Spectre dual lane, not known for its laning prowess yeah. if they're up against anything more than like a very weak single off laner. Yeah, well, they got, I, I don't know what you do though. Like, wh what's your adjustment? You put Bristle Wisp here, Spectre's not going to have a better time in the off lane. I, I think you can't really put a mid. You could send the Wisp there and just leave Bristle alone at top, I guess, is the one main possibility. Uh, Bristle, at least against a dual lane, can get XP it's, in some farm. It's true, but. Maybe they avoid deaths, but I feel like the Wisp is not getting kills or, or zoning. This Beastmaster is yeah. already level 4. Beastmaster looking pretty good. I was wrong, it's actually not the terrible cool boys. It's okay. a slightly different one, but they're not... I don't, I don't know my cosmetics, I'm no... Uh, I don't no either. Theory. I was like, okay, God says this is the other one. I just be. saw it was, a, it was a mythical beast, and I assumed it was the, the hideous beast that we were plaguing us yesterday when we had you a Beastmaster You know what they say game. about assumptions. Um, Make an ass out of you and me. Um, Disappointing guts. I'm sorry. I let, I let down. I let you down, LD, as well as all, all of our viewers. It was. Oh, they're they're already raging. Well, they will be in two minutes. So angry. So Chen going for kind of a build we're seeing a bit more and more level one, a uh, level two into the penitence. So you get that little bit of slow to set up the centaur stun to combine with the beastmaster slows. There's some increased kill potential from the slow as opposed to getting the tested. They're not lacking in damage. The problem is if they the opponents just get away and they can't kind of keep them slowed down or locked in place. Level 3 Chen. Yeah, double I mean, he this can just come right back here. They're about to get the level 5 Beastmaster as well. This is... 
It should These be heroes either bet. run or they die. Like they, they yeah. don't stand in lane and fight against this. In theory, they could kill the Spectre too. Yeah, you can dagger over trees, but if you slow the Spectre enough, you get the Ensnare Central stun. That's a kill as well. They kind of want to bait him in. No, they're just going to go for Dave. It'll be yeah. the, the easy low hanging fruit of a kill, and they'll get it too with that stomp coming out. Nowhere for Dave to go. Get sliced to pieces by the axe. And then he even forces the Wisp bottom. That's a victory in and of itself now. Yep. Your troll going to have a, a reasonable time top lane as 10 stick charges salving up. He'll be at full HP and mana. And in very good shape. And soaring complete. This is this is such a potent start. Queen of Pain is winning mid pretty substantially, actually, I have to say. This is a really nice showing by Heinrich. Tinker will have the jungle stacks to fall back. Yeah. That's like your, your typical Tinker has missed that last stack, unfortunately, would have a quad stack. But even so, still looking good. Heinrich and Blink Forward looking for Godot. The laser are going to help him out a little bit, but turn, pendant, no Sentinel stun then. Looks like Boomback should get out of this one. We'll take a decent amount of damage, though, on his way out. Right. Yeah, has the bottle charges. He'll make yeah. it out. Now, maybe this Queen of Pain able to farm the the mighty Centaur Conqueror. No creep deny. Maybe was going to go for it, but that Dark Troll Warlord has quite a wind-up. Still, Spectre is CSing okay. 17 CS. Venge is on the feed train, but if Venge is on the feed train, as long as your Spectre is getting some farm, maybe it, maybe it works out okay here for Arcanus. Yeah, and can pick up an urn if he wants to. Generally, Spectres kind of... They come online pretty early, and then they have this kind of slow period after they've used their first couple of haunts. Like, I think your, your Spectres nowadays are much more looking to use that first haunt or two to find a kill with, like, a mid-hero or someone, get some urn charges, and then they go back to farming the Radiance. So we could see Spectre with this kind of fast early CS make something happen. Bottom lane, there's a roll though. They go in on Mighty Savior, and that slow is just insane. They've left the Spectre to one v one of Beast Fester. Like, whew, this is not this is not a lane Spectre can hope to win. As Boombacks will get caught top, they may be losing both sides. The Quills are stacking up on the Musico, but Bach gets. Oh no. He's got the quill stacks. He's got the momentum. They gotta run the hell away. They're gonna lose music here as well, it looks like. One more quill spray. They get both. The double. It cost them their specter bottom. Not a particularly adept farmer, but... Well, at least they're making up for it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Two for two around the map. Yeah, Bristol ain't done. He wanted to go in those uh, the troll summoners at top, but couldn't quite get enough quills off of them. That was... Uh, this Bristle. He's in a place where he can actually have a big mid-game impact. There's going to be rushing a headdress, so... Looks like he's going to be the mech buyer for the team. Not your standard Bristle. Normally you see kind of just your Treads Vanguard, but... Wanting to kind of help out, and... Especially if Spectre's going to be coming to some fights early on, having that extra burst heal just allow Spectre to kind of be... A frontline damage dealer and tank in some, to some extent, especially once you get a point or two in the Desolate. He has a Wisp on his team as well. Yeah. So he can actually afford this from a yes. mana point of view. So he's got the completed buckler now with a magic wand, so looking pretty good. It's level 6, it'll be a TP in mid from your Venge, and we'll see just the bottle refill. That's nothing crazy, not looking for a kill or anything, just just helping out the Queen of Pain, who actually blinks forward aggressively. Bold move from Heinrich. Yeah. He's gonna swing around now, he's trying to find the other way in, there's no march any longer. Never mind that, he's into the jungle now, hunting Godot, who's very low. But doesn't get vision on him. Actually sees the creeps being pulled. Now the haste wears off. Oh, so close to getting that Chen kill, but gets Bristle nothing. Maybe he tries to take the come. stack, though. Yeah, It's worth the Sonic Wave, I think, because that's Tinker's catch-up farm. This Tinker really needs this stack. He's being scouted, though. This is actually worrisome. There's a double uh -oh. ensnare. Uh-oh. Throws out the Queen of Pain. Oh, disruption of elbow. Okay. He doesn't get it off in time. Now the Penitence comes out onto Heinrich as he retreats. Has a blink. He's just going to TP. Able to make it out. But they do protect, protect and preserve that stack, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's the big thing there. Tinker cannot afford to have that stack get stolen from him. That is crucial gold for chains. It looks like he's got his soul ring on Kuria, so he'll probably find that as soon as possible. There's a bristle who can take it. There's Queen of Pain's not really great at stealing it. it. Takes a few too many screams to do so, but you just want to make sure you secure this as soon as possible. Yeah, that bristle's busy farming his mech. Bach is he's just chilling top lane on his own. Wisp was only here for the first, like, two, three minutes. This is... Yeah, they had the tri lane there for about a minute or two, but he's been doing well without a whole lot of backup this time around. Yeah. He will move towards the stack, but it is far too late. Chains has already claimed it. Heinrich moving into position. Chains gets everything, and looks like he'll make it out. Well well done. Uh-oh. 3 4 three. Not so lucky, though. Yeah, there will be a pause, but... That ain't gonna Not say sure that. how he's getting out of this one. No <laughs> hand of God. Yeah. No TPs even on CSW. That is a 
dead Shadow Demon. Yeah. Bristle does see the other triple stack of the medium camp. He may look to farm this one instead. Wisp is kind of nearby. Okay, finish off that kill. So it looks like Bristle going to take the triple stack, which is a little chunk of gold to be taken. We'll have a quick pause here as your Shadow Demon dis disconnects. Hmm. Score 5 to 5. Gold, though, is currently going CSW's way up by about 1,500. Experience 1,500 there as well. Spectre has caught up, though. Phase Boots online. Bracer up. In terms of CS, he's even. Beastmaster with every is core. top net worth. What is this? 2D with 4K net worth, 2K gold? That is insane. I don't know if you want to rush a blink. I feel I like Necro Book is your item here. Yeah, probably. getting a blink this early is almost like too fast. It's an item that you could theoretically be getting this game, but the Midas Beastmaster is the yeah. time. <laughs> Considering how early it is this much gold, you want an item that will help you snowball. And I don't think Blink does that because end of the day, there's not too much follow-up damage coming from a Tinker. Doesn't have his bo if Tinker boots to travel. That's roughly when you want your blink for your raw initiation. Dive goes on to music at top lane. They have a TP on the Shadow Demon. Is he going to come and assist his buddy? Looking for the bash here under the tower. Boombax almost going down. Musica fights his way through the Wiz Bristle duo. One more auto attack does him in. Does he get it off in time? Nope. The bottle charges. Doesn't matter. They bring down both as Tootie joins the fray top lane. Bristle boss looking very wow. mortal here and not so bossy after all. Tootie just the tempo controller right now. You wouldn't expect it to be the offlane Beastmaster, but just got such a good time in that lane. and It really shows you like this Bristle Wisp is so strong against certain heroes, but... Troll is really not one of them. The blind just mitigates a lot of the incoming damage with those Warpath auto attacks. The other thing, gods, is they didn't have their mech. That was sitting in the side shot, or uh, sorry, in the in the stash. Yep. If they have the mech there, that probably goes differently. Yeah, they really need. And Troll making the right decision, like, okay, there's Bristlebacks on me under the tower, but you've got to go for that Wisp. Take away the healer, force the Wisp away, try and break the tether. And even if they stay connected, it means Wisp is taking more right click damage. So made a good call there. One thing I kind of could have done is use the Haunt from the Spectre, which would have made things a bit easier for them. I don't know if it would have got them that kill, but maybe even found a way to retreat out of there. So uh, holding on to that Spectre Ultimate. And Spectre not going for the Urn, which it's not the not a I don't it's a more personal preference kind of thing, but it does kind of suggest he's going to be looking to farm more rather than kind of haunt in and take some fights. Yeah, in general, you need at least one like cheap little HP item. Bracer is okay. I think completing the drums or getting an urn is still fine as Bach gonna try to dive Musica. He's gonna be scared back and in fact tanking the tower will now pop his mech. They'll bring in the Spectre. This could be the reinforcement they need to get the kill. Where's the haunt end? A reality end tosses out the dagger. Musica pursued out by Goo. They need this kill for Mighty Savior Boy. He could sure use that gold and he'll get it. Now up to 1300. Could buy a VIP booster if he wanted. Could complete the drums or could just try to rush his way towards the relic. Yeah, there was a bit of a fight mid while that was going on. The Queen of Pain almost killed the Tinker with a Sonic Wave, but got kind of saved by a Shadow Demon disruption during the haunt, and also the Beastmaster showing up, who unfortunately didn't have Raw, or Queen of Pain would have died. Well, they want to fight top lane. Looks like they've got this disruption online. Tower yep. has a glyph. Here comes Beastmaster. They are not giving this one up. Radiant team has no vision. This is a risky move sticking around here, gods. No haunt, no relocate. They'll just be completely at the mercy of CSW, and the Wisp gets roared. Focused immediately, chopped to bits by the axes, and now he starts to stack up the quills, Bach does, but is it going to be enough to secure any kills? They kite him, they control him, and they will bring him down. Heinrich, hunting through the tree line, doesn't finish off CSW. Actually, or uh, not, sorry, not CSW, 343. Uh, three. We may be looking for one more blink scream, but he's worried about that dark troll trap, which is about to cool down. By the way, this, this mud golem is rather <laughs> clowny. I don't know why you end up with a mud golem here. walking around with that. Maybe he had to like persuade it just so he could get the the camp respawn or something, but that's like the only that's a big stretch. That's clown shoes, otherwise. That's, that's yeah. all I can think of is like, oh, I gotta kill it in the next two seconds or it won't respawn in time. Bottom lane tower gets claimed. That's a Spectre tower too, so up to two K gold, mighty savior, kind of inching closer and closer to that relic. He's up there with kind of some of those top farmers right now. That's big, nineteen hundred gold. At the same time, he is very vulnerable right now. They cannot. They, there's two main ways to approach this. One is to just gank the Spectre. The other is to just pressure elsewhere on the map, be it go for a Roshan, which they could do pretty early if they want to. Um, or maybe even just try to take some towers. But if they don't do either, Arcanus, this investment will pay off soon. You give him four or five minutes, the Spectre will have that relic and be well on his way to Irradiance. Boombacks at mid. Taking a lot of damage. <laughs> 
Laser almost comes the, off. The miracle smoked Ooh. illusion of the Queen of Pain to bring him out to safety. In the meantime, music atop goes blow for blow with Bach, has the mech. But in comes the column, the mud column of doom. Wow. A duke and already thrown out, but the quill stack up. He may kill the whole Chen army as well as Musica. Needs that bash. Oh. He has the axes coming off cooldown, but Quap is there. We'll get one, make it two, and now they can slaughter the rest of the army where it stands. Also reinforcing with, was Dave, although I have no. to say, he didn't actually do anything there. <laughs> just a wave of terror chucked out. And that golem thought it was Mike Tyson or something. Like just giving the, the punches to the bristleback, but that was I mean, cockiness if I've ever seen it. CSW get taken out. They, without that, I guess you're going to get a bash sooner or later with the troll, but yeah, that... That was later. <laughs> that was later, and if they'd got that a bit early, it would have been a bit more... Maybe they get that kill a bit faster, and the Queen of Pain doesn't rock up in time, but... Unfortunately, it's Queen of Pain now. Looking better and better scepter. for Arcanus here now. It yep. was a 2,000 gold lead for the Dyer. It swung 3,000 the other way. And well. experience back to dead even. Spectre keeping an eye on his inventory. He's up to 2,600. We're going to see that 16, 17 minute relic if they don't do something, gods. Yeah, they need to make a move soon, it feels like. At the same time, they've got the Tinkers, so they're probably thinking that they're, they're late game, at least they have some options. Tinker but just does not match up well against Spectre, nope. especially not with a Wisp. you gotta, you got to really farm and go kind of like super late game with your Tinker to, to stand a chance for Spectre. That once the Spectre gets like that Radiance, even just Radiance Vip Booster or something, you're in trouble. Roll down bottom lane, Heinrich going to get caught out. Nicely done. Went for a Yule Scepter, which is like a kind of preliminary ca counter Tinker item, but it doesn't feel like the Tinker's a big problem now. He doesn't even have his Blink Dagger for one thing, so it may... I'm not sure. I guess your other option is your Orchid, which no neither item would have saved him there from that roll. Yeah, well, Ags is the other option, and that probably yeah, would have saved some him. Some HP could have helped. Well, they're going to relocate here top lane onto Musica. He'll just turn and fight. Maybe he can go on. I know this Wisp Bombax has to be careful. The mech keeping him alive. Music, a, a beefcake through it all. He did not pop his stick before TPing out, but he'll barely Ooh, make that it. That channel. Meanwhile, Boombax. He almost healed. brought down as he'll relocate back towards the well. Spectre wanting to make a defense of this bottom lane, perhaps, but Dire Vision is there behind the tier 1 tower, so they'll see heroes coming down this lane to defend, and Wisp Bristleback not really equipped to defend. Bristle out of mana, Wisp back to Fountain to heal. 3,000 gold. They are losing territory. But I don't really think it's quickly enough. Uh, certainly not for CSW to feel comfy. Not to say they can't take it late, uh, at least to some extent. But yeah. if it goes super, super late, Ar Arcanists are going to really be in their comfort More zone. More farm about to come box Boxway on the Bristleback. A nice little ancient stack here waiting for him. And this will get him probably another 1, 1.2k. Yeah, he's just going to turn his Bok and spam those quills. Oh, Nemo Musica is over near that. <laughs> Did you want me to recognize that? Yeah. I don't know. That was good. <laughs> it, it, was, it was solid. I like it. A little wordplay. Yeah. It's like I wanted to just let it let it settle and. <laughs> First, I wasn't sure if, you, if it went over your worry. head, and then I'm like, <laughs> "Where does he think it's that bad?" No, uh, it was it was good, but it was like I thought it'd be better if I didn't say anything. You know. I gave you that look. <laughs> yeah, you gave me the look as if I didn't get it, so I was like, okay, i got to say something now, otherwise LD will think I missed his joke. The Haunt is going to dodge an incoming rocket, which keeps me mighty safe here alive. Oh dear. Oh, the Haunt helping to keep him alive. Chains may go down here, barely able to retreat out. Mighty Savior so low, one more machine would have done him in, but he lives, and that puts him 500 gold off of his precious relic. Only the Beastmaster going down there, but crucially, no Spectre. And they end the Mega Kill on the Quap. Suddenly, 1,200 yep. gold. Can get that point booster if she wants to go into an Ags. Can get the Ogre Club for a BKB. Uh, could even just build straight yeah. towards something like a Hex. Korea's headed to the secret shop. Probably the point booster. Here we go. Could be the Relic, but it's a little yeah. early. That was the Queen of Pain sending. But yeah, so point booster picked up. There's her survivability. And Ag Scepter just going to be nice in general this game. Can go through the Chin Creep Army. Just the shorter cooldown. And CSW, you have to be a bit careful here. It doesn't feel like they're getting enough pressure onto this Spectre anymore. After that fantastic lane stage, just 200 gold away from the Relic. Dave is going to do a bit of dewarding here as the machines march in. They still haven't gone Roche either. 17 minutes in for CSW, running the Troll Beastmaster Chen. It's like an auto Roche lineup. Now they're going to go for it, but 
Even 17 minutes in, it feels a little late. Oh, they headed towards there. I can't have three heroes nearby. They have haunt. Spectre does oh, not have relic yet, though. I don't know if he wants to risk a haunt in right It's before. on cooldown for 30 seconds, oh, too. Okay. So. Yeah, Music with the DD is bringing it down very quickly. Maybe a relocate in from your Wisp, but... He's kind of far away. They're pinging it out, but it looks like it's too late. Honestly, I, I feel like Arcana should not be that worried yeah. about a mages on CSW. It will help them push. They may struggle to hold their their tier two, one, like one or two of their tier twos, maybe that tier one top, but they, they have a fast radiant. CSW are not that tanky. Uh-oh. Here comes the fight. Initiation, disruption onto Boombax. He does have the tether, not using it just yet, as Bach gets trapped out by the net, but he tries to go and force his three heroes back, fighting the whole Chen army as well. They will lose their Vengeful Spirit. Spectre still chilling and farming mid. Finally will haunt in. Wants to clean up all these fleeing heroes. They'll bring down three on the side of Arcanus. Your Spectre now going to back his way out. In the meantime, Heinrich deals with the Shadow Demon. They could even maybe look for a go forward. They will onto Chains. Gets off the Shadow Strike, but gets trapped. Then the Yule Scepter to try and keep him alive. Three seconds, though. Has the stick charges. Where's that Bash? Didn't get it. And will end up blinking out to safety. But Spectre survives, gets the Relic, and now about halfway to the Radiance. Okay. A pretty... Recipe. Yeah. A slightly Arcanus favored fight. They don't get deal with the Aegis, though, so they're still the troll with the Aegis for CSW. <laughs> but Spectre staying alive, Queen of Pain staying alive, both those heroes getting kills and getting stuff done. That's ultimately going to get Arcanus closer and closer to this really strong kind of... It's going to be like these late game items like the Radiance and the Ag Scepter and the Queen of Pain, but they're going to get them around 20 to 25 minutes where... CSW won't have the answers, won't be ready to fight. They'll be ready to fight if it goes to like 40 minutes where Tinker gets a Bloodstone with Dagon, Hex and all these items, but it feels like CSW are going to have like a 10 minute window where they have to avoid fights at all costs. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And then even late late game, if, if Tinker gets that big, it's not like an automatic win by any stretch. It could, could still struggle here. They will get a disruption off. 3-4-3, three, three, though. Not sure what the follow-up's going to be. It's Chains blinking in. Chen does not have Hand of God. Does have the mech available. Four heroes descending on the fight. They want to burst down Boombax. They'll be successful. Now, turning their attention to Mr. Bok. He'll be surrounded. Takes the net to the face. Will end up going down to a hot Dukin. Actually, the troll, the one with the last hit. It's Quaffle. Retreat out. They lose two again. Spectre not dying, though. About to get that Radiance recipe. Still, Arcanus, it's fine to create that space, but this is a little too much of an investment. Now they lose a tier 1 top, maybe even a tier 2. Yeah, they definitely have to be a bit careful, because CSW still have a good kind of just team fight. They've got a good hero composition that can still scale well. Like, this troll in general is a carry. Beastmaster's getting good farms, going to have his Necro books coming online soon. And Necro, Necro 3 against Spectre, pretty, pretty good. It does a lot of damage Inspector can't really avoid killing it sometimes because of the Radiance burn and the dispersion damage, so that's some actual decent damage to try and focus down the Spectre with. Similarly, Tinker, as much as Spectre is a good counter Tinker hero, Tinker can still get so much done around the map, and one haunt like isn't going to be able to kill a Tinker on its own. Spectre needs that kind of follow-up, generally speaking. And yeah. You give Tinker enough farm, like a Dagon, Dagon to follow up the Bloodstone, suddenly Spectre can actually be burst down as well by a Tinker. Yeah, they do have relocate. They have quops. They have pretty good mobile yes. heroes to to keep up with the haunt ganks. Heinrich now wanting to farm. Will be rather aggressive in his positioning here, though. Two D not able to blink after him in time. Ends up misfiring a bit. Arcanus will back it off and look to regroup. The Spectre not going back for his drums. Mighty Savior should have that soon. Gets the rest. Or uh, sorry, gets the the robe of the Magi. Works on the recipe. And it's just gonna be buying time here. Spectre slowly closing in on top of net worth as they just wait it out. Just time is Arcanus's friend right now. CSW, like you've been, like we've kind of been saying, it's not really their enemy, but this is a time where they're very strong and Arcanus are still pretty damn squishy and not particularly adept at fighting. Yeah, so we'll see. Once Heinrich gets the Ag Scepter, CSW will probably have to be a lot more careful about some fights. They'll always be looking for the pickups. The Beastmaster Roar, the Tinker TP in and try to follow up with some burst damage, but with a little bit of timing left on the Aegis and no Ag Scepter yet on the Queen of Pain, deciding that they can get a bit of damage done on this Tier 2 down bottom, although Queen of Pain looking for a bit of a trade at mid, and not something CSW want to give up. Troll just laying into the tower from range. He is tanking a couple of tower pot shots here or there. There's a TP towards mid lane, will be cancelled by Chains. He's going to reload and potentially go again. He'll take the tier 2 bottom. Cancelled two in a row, actually. I think he 
he's kind of suspicious as to who's behind this Queen of Pain. Or getting yulsed up and getting focused down. He has 1300 health, though. I don't yeah. think Quap can solo kill him. No. Would need that plus one. It would be the, the Spectre Horn if somehow he gets jumped, yulsed up, Horn to follow with an ulti, so. There's Hand of God. Maybe Shadow Demon as TP. It could actually turn out to be a good bait for CSW. Yeah, it's. I think that's the other thing where, like, moving towards the late game where, yeah, Tinker can get caught out by a lot of things, but they can also use that to their advantage, knowing that Arcanus can be looking to jump this Tinker a lot. CSW can, like, play him around as bait. And he's going to go straight into the Bloodstone. Pretty normal stuff, but especially good when you're looking to maybe use him as bait. There goes the roar into Heinrich. Where's the follow-up, though? He does get tossed up by the Axes. March coming in. Heinrich able to blink away, but the laser follows him over the cliff. Chains with that. Excellent tracking, able to bring him down. Now the Blink forward, another laser, and another kill. This one going to Tootie. Another two-hero pickoff for CSW. Really starting to stack these up, and, you know, Arcanus, uh, as, much, as strong as their late game could be, they're not going to get there if they keep on giving up these two for nil exchanges. Yeah, it feels like CSW just finding their tempo, using the Beastmaster Hulk to great effect. They've got great map control going around, and it's something where you've got all this these global heroes and this kind of line that's looking to catch out a Tinker, but he's always going to have that vision around him to support him, and it's CSW who are taking objectives now. They do a lot of damage up top. They probably won't be able to get this T2 tower in full here. You have to be a bit worried with Troll no longer having the Aegis on his side. Tower, has been denied. tower will be denied mid now by Mr. Chains. He'll TP himself back to the well. Looks like he wants to go. Bach has picked up his BKB. They'll toss out, toss out a Troll Trap. Not engaging on them yet, but they do begin to clump up and prepare for a siege. Yeah. And Arcanus, as good as their team fight may be, their D push is a bit lacking here. Troll will take advantage of that. Pops the battle trance, starts firing out axes. Mini machine gun at work here. Chen creep starts to drop a little bit. He's going to lose one centaur. To, no, he'll mech it. Just to keep that one centaur alive. It's the Beastmaster who's got his roar back up that they have to be very careful of. A blink roar. It's going to be the initiation CSW are looking for, and you can't easily counter shift. Shadow Demon will be ready with those defensive disruptions, and just in general, Arcanus have got to be very careful. There's your Blink Roar. Going to catch up, boom, backs. The Purge goes out on box. Even though he BKBs, he's still kind of being cutted around. Well, goes down anyway. Yeah. Musica now in through the front lines. A tanky toot. He can't be brought down, and now through the BKB comes a Troll Trap. Comes a kill. CSW finding one. Quapult only getting... That Chen, and then Zafter uses Hand of God. They will haunt in now, though. Is anybody low enough to be killed off? Spectre, jumping around with the reality, will secure a secondary kill and another support. But it's these cores they want music. Oh, close call. Chains TP back into a stun. He needs to be a bit... Well, he's going to get one kill, but he may go what? down in return. He could Bloodstone. Nope, just yeah. in time. Still not ideal there. Giving away your Tinker at the end was not particularly worth that trade. Yeah. Came very close to killing the Spectre, perhaps, who won one rocket after that Rion, but played it. I say play. I don't know about safe, but played the kind of more conservative route and just did the Bloodstone suicide. So Queen of Pain now with an Ag Scepter. That was a huge Queen of Pain ulti that last fight as well. Heinrich catching, I think, four of the five heroes. I actually thought he had it. It did a lot of damage. Yeah. It, huh. it, it, he's now level did 16 Heinrich with miss the ulti. Skill? He's, oh, no. He, he just, just, he just had it. Yeah. Well, he was level 16 and didn't skill the ult at first, but okay. I thought he maybe took stats by accident. Now they're going to jump in on the Mighty Savior. Gets roared and the Insta Chain Bash. Down he goes. The defensive relocate was attempted. This is going to be the death of the Wisp oh, as yeah. well. Two for nothing. Spectre has no buyback and no haunt. So if they try to defend this Wisp, it could be very costly. Heimrich's trying to gain position for a tether out and we'll allow him to the do chase so. chase comes out though. Chain's leaping forward. Blinking in his Musica. He'll immediately get stunned by Dave, though. Now, 3-4-3 three, three to put him up. Who BKBs? CSW beginning their retreat. Tootie in the front line trying to body block a little bit. Heinrich and Musica exchanging blows. That BKB and Bach is going to wear off. They bring down one. Now it's Bach's turn to run. He's a may maybe overextended. In comes the Chen. The Penitent supplied. The chase is on the other way. The Centaur Not army the roars Necroboard. forward. They get the kill with the Zap. An overextension here in a big way from Arcanus. As they are forced oh, all the they, way back. They see Dave. He's going to get slowed and hit by the Whirling Axes here. That's the end of your revenge. Four dead. Spectre respawns. I'm, I'm really surprised they didn't just sack the Wisp. Like, maybe yeah. send one hero for the tether out, but they just committed the whole team. And with no Spectre Haunt, they simply do not have the damage. Feeling like they could, Queen of Pain could... I th think Queen of Pain thought with the wrong cooldown, it was just at least a, he could put himself in a position for that tether out, but... 
It was just too aggressive. Uh, he, after that, he followed up by a blinking, going for kills. Yeah, and then Bristleback back, BKBs yeah. and was like, okay, we're fighting now, but... Uh, yeah, the tether out is one thing, but it was more like the choice to fight after that that just seemed ill-advised from Arcanus. They'll get punished. Now the gold really starting to go against them. An 8,000 gold deficit, 8,000 experience deficit, and the Spectre, 3, 2, and 4. He's not having that explosive mid-game. Had a pretty timely Radiance, considering the lane. But hasn't done much with it since then. And outside of the Spectre, they do have some heroes that scale on the late game for sure. But, you know, guys, I feel one of the biggest issues is just how easily this Wisp dies this game. They have the Blink Roar, as we're going to see a jump. Speaking of which, on the Mighty Savior, bottom lane. He'll go down once more. Wisp even relocated in for this one. They can't get anything done. They're going to be forced back again. Arcanus just failing to protect their key assets. And now may forfeit a Roche as a result. Yeah. I think this game just kind of highlighting almost some of the weaknesses of Spectre. The hero is picked as kind of a, a counter pick into the Tinker, but you've got to be able to have carries that can actually fight more. Either they need to be split pushes, which is where sometimes like an anti mage will work out nowadays, or they need to be fighting carries. And Spectre, even when you get that Radiance, not the best fighting carry. The hero just too squishy, doesn't have the best escapes, doesn't have any way to fight into a troll. Not to mention just you get roared, you die to your Tinker burst damage. There's just too much too many spells and too many damage and lockdown kind of options for CSW to fall to to yeah. just the, completely the team, crush The teams that run it well pick more independent lanes. Like yeah. Void Boys always pick two very strong laning supports who can zone, who can keep that Spectre farming freely and well, Arcanist did not do that. They went for the Bristleback Wisp early, their strategy was built around it, then they are like, okay, we're going to throw a Spectre in as a counter pick to a Tinker. I think it's if you want Spectre, your whole strategy has to be based around it rather than just you know, slapping it into a draft yeah. at the end. Definitely one of those things where you can't just pick heroes like it. You can't f entirely focus on trying to counter an enemy hero if it doesn't fit your overall plan and draft, which, yeah, there's some synergy between the global potential with the relocate in, but they don't really have a good kind of lockdown or initiation the, option. The, the hero that I mentioned briefly in the draft that they I was also thinking they would consider was, was Storm. Yeah. Storm, obviously great against Tinker. It's a team that had... They had already shown their Chen... Their Beastmaster, I think, Tanker, and then Troll. They fourth picked the Spectre, so uh, it was yeah. CSW who last picked Shadow Demon and fourth picked, um, I think it was the, the Beastmaster was in the first two. So, so Shadow Demon was the last pick. Yeah. Tinker was third picked out of that, so I think it was Troll, the was, Troll fourth was fourth pick. pick. Yeah. yeah. I, at that point, they've already shown their offlaner, who's not that great at killing Storm, Beastmaster. I think Storm was a very viable alternative this game. Also goes well with the Wisp. You can you can help the Bristleback in lane, and maybe you go around helping the Storm later on, set up some relocate ganks. Uh, of course, hindsight 2020, but yeah. the other option was just to leave the Bristleback on his own in the top lane for the beginning and really focus on nailing down that bottom lane with the tri lane. I think if they had laned it differently, it would have gone a bit better, but they're in a position now where they're struggling to... Stay afloat. CSW, yeah. the team with the map control, the team once again with an Aegis on their Troll Warlord who now can look towards that first big damage item. 3.1k gold in the bank. I think more so than the cores, maybe this game, like the Spectre, I think you can kind of see how you can't really man fight into these carries very well, but we've seen almost no impact coming out of the Arcana supports. Like the Venge has been just MIA for most of the game. It feels like the Wisp has tried to do some work with Bok, but most of the time when Wisp has been there, it's been. They're getting baited in, and Wisp is getting jumped and brought down first. So the supports from Arcanus have been completely negated by CSW, and I think by some good play of CSW and maybe just some misplays on the Arcanus side, they haven't found rotations, they haven't found any really ways yeah. to kind of impose themselves on this game. Well, you go back to the Venge pick. It's an amazing support, but it is not the best zoning support. And certainly Beastmaster, I think one of the best offlaners, that if you have like a slightly underwhelming zoning support he can just destroy it with the the boar yeah that's if specter's a strong if you if that's like a, a troll in the safe lane then it's no problem you know you can easily deal with the beastmaster but yeah when you have a weak laning carry you need strong laning supports also it's just or you need them they, to have a weak off lane they would pick a, a specter when they had the vent for like the minus armor damage or it feels like they should maybe go towards a more right click based carry option like you've got the bristleback who can benefit from the wave of terror a bit but it feels like the Spectre, the Queen of Pain, this is very magic damage based carries and cores, so doesn't really feel like these heroes fit with the Venge. If they'd gone for 
something more along the lines of a Slardar or a Juggernaut, something which is doing a lot more physical damage in a fight, it would make a bit more sense with the bench. But Still, we're at a point now where they'll have to make the best of it as there's a, yes. a router being reset, 500 ping. Well, I guess we're not the only ones having lag when, it, when we're trying to play. <laughs> Chains is what? ready. Not sure if Arcanus is, though. They'll want their Spectre to make his way back in. <laughs> Check out CSW Chains on YouTube. Does he actually make YouTube videos? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know he made YouTube videos. Maybe he, just, maybe he sings or something. There, there's Can we go check it out? Oh, I'll, I'll well, four heroes are disconnected. CSW Chains, you know? Maybe it's not. It could be Dota stuff. It could be... No, Paige is unavailable. They lied. They they did lie to us. Can we can we penalize them for that LD? Is there something in the rules about that? You know, is is, is that a thing? CSW change in deceitfulness. <laughs> you tell them, LD. <laughs> oh, you search. You don't go to the. Okay, okay. You t so it's not the channel name, it's something else. CSW Chains. <laughs> what are we looking at here? <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I don't know if this is viewer friendly. I'm kind of spooked. It's a silent v picture of his face so far. There's going to be like a scream at the end. What is that? I, I don't get it. Uh, maybe there was sound. No, I don't think there's sound. I, I had my laptop. I was on. waiting for a screamer at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be something really obnoxious. I'm, I'm a little spooked, but at the same time, it did not live up to the expectations. It's still creepy. It's just, he's just staring at us. Yeah, I... I, I <laughs> well, <laughs> the CSW guys are amused. Uh, they're easily amused. Yeah. I should try some of my dad jokes on them. <laughs> well, Arcanus for now. Three disconnected. Eating into their pause time here in game one, gods. Hmm. Well, we're probably four minutes in here. Well, I they got bigger issues than, than pause timers right now. They've got a very farm tinker who's almost got a scythe of vice. Beastmaster's controlling the map, Trolls got an Aegis once more, and you got to imagine CSW are going to start even poking around at the high ground, push with the Troll Battle Trance. Yeah, they haven't got much to kind of complement it, but you've got Battle Trance with the Inner Beast, and you've got Tinker laying down March of the Machine, so it makes it hard to engage into. Defending not going to be easy for Arcanus. Looks like Reconnects will come back in, and just waiting on that Spectre now. So it looks like they just had to maybe change their internet line. Just Pinoy Dota things, man. It's rough being a Pinoy Dota player sometimes. Dave is playing from Singapore, right? Or is it um, Malaysia? Malaysia? Malaysia, I imagine. Unless he's gone to play slash boot camp with them in Philippines. That would I'm seem not. backwards. Normally you'd want the players to, to leave the Philippines yeah. so they have good internet. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. It's interesting they picked up Dave because this is a very... I guess Mineski did something similar where they... We were kind of the first Pinoy team to bring in some SEA players as far as like Singapore and Malaysia went when they had Johnny come in. But something the Pinoy teams has normally gone for like a full national roster just based on kind of convenience, the fact they play from their land cafes. But yeah, I kind of bringing in Dave. Seems to. It's, you know, TI5 is approaching. There's a lot of qualifiers going on. It's yeah. tempting to just pick up that, that high profile player who's got a track record and. As far as SEA free agents go, Dave has to be near the top of the list of high-profile yeah. pickups. I'm not sure how comfortable he really is in the support role, though. I feel like I've been more impressed by his core play. Yeah, I think I think so too. That was I, especially like this game here. We haven't seen much from. I think even yesterday, they he wasn't having the, his best days. So I I'm not sure how much the support role really fits him. But I now. guess somebody's got to play it and. Apparently the the other cores don't want to. Yeah, Heinrich's done really well. He's he's been one of the more impressive players of this team. Just his his mid play when he snowballs, he can really do a lot, control the tempo of the game. He's done pretty well this game, but they're gonna have to do a whole lot more. 
using some of these core heroes. So right now CSW looks like uh, going to have things back underway here in game one of the best of three. Our last elimination best of three for today. We've already seen earlier today Invasion getting knocked out by the Korean MVP Hot Six squad. And one more team, the loser of this best of three, going to be going home as well. Arcanis, one of three Filipino teams competing in this qualifier. The other two have managed to stay up in that winner's bracket so far. That would, of course, be Rave as well as Mineski. Guaranteed one P Pino team in the top three, at least. But at the end of the day, being top three is not saying to say, oh, I got top three. You want to... It's no. first or nothing. It's, it's maybe a good barometer of relative strength of teams yes. in the region, but as far as practical benefits for them, it's not much. They, they want to get to land. Anything less is is maybe a little shot in the arm as far as confidence goes, but nothing more than that. Arcanus now trying to collect themselves, get this game back together. It looked like they were going to start to come online in a big way with that Spectre Radiance, the Quap Ags coming out at a similar time, but it started to fall apart a bit here. They'll be on the back foot. Now the Chen gets his Ags, and what do you know? He's preserved a delightful Granite Golem to go with his triple Centaur Conqueror army. And, well, they don't even need that channel, it looks like. They're jumping in mid lane. Straight on to Dave they go. Music on the front lines. Relocate was used by Boombax just to get in here. But they force out that relocate, and, well, the Wisp, not going to get a whole lot done. He's going to come, yeah, it's pretty far away. So he'll, he'll get back out of there, and they're going to continue to push. Just, the roar's yeah, on you cooldown, just push but... Her. You got the Granite Golem. Yeah. You don't have roar, but you have now your Tinker Hex. You have a spammable roar of sorts. Pop gonna try desperately to slow this one down, but hand of God, the solution to their woes. So that, yeah, that'll heal up the the Chen creeps at least. They lose the Necro books, but Queen of Pain gonna have to count down the seconds for that next ultimate. Will be at least a T2 tower, it looks like here. Yeah, if it was th if it were 30 seconds, she could maybe hold off these pushes indefinitely. But that extra 10 seconds between the creep wave spawns, if CSW want, they could force the issue. Looks like they don't want. Oh, Tinker at top may even find the Spectre here. I don't know if he can kill him. He's going to try for it, but nice. has to be worried about a relocate, which is off cooldown in 10. Yep. So CSW kind of just play things slow for now. They're going to swing down towards bottom lane now. I wonder what they're waiting for. Beastmaster is Necro hmm. 3. Chen just got eggs. You just got a Hex on Tinker. Maybe they're waiting for a pickoff, I guess, is yeah. one option. Like, they want to turn to a 4v5, try kill a Queen of Pain or a Spectre, even someone like a Wisp. That that makes sense, but beyond that, there is there's just no item coming soon that's going to change this game for them. They they should be looking to push. Their Sonic advantage. Wave was just used bottom, so this should be a tier two secured now. It looks like Chain's going to try to wrap it up with some March spam from the tree line, and up to the north flies the hawk proudly, soaring over the the cliff there. You see rockets continue to fly out onto Mr. Bach, troll scaring him away. The rocket spam continues in earnest and does force Arcanus back a little bit. March doing some decent damage. Chen may pop a hand of God here. Still, everyone healthy thanks to that Granite Golem. In a lot of ways, really is the answer to the Tinker March spam. It's keeping everyone all much higher in terms of their HP pool. A lot more difficult to bring down. And here comes the high ground breach. Hand of God comes out a little bit late. But they'll still... They still won't lose anything here. Spectre slowly split pushing, but not getting a whole lot done. And, well, with Roar online, with the Hexes ready, at any moment, CSW could opt for a jump. But if they don't go in the next minute, they'll have to wait for that next Aegis or else risk it. Yeah, time is ticking on that. They know there's no Queen of Pain ultimate for another 15 seconds, so this may be the creep wave where they try to bring down the tier 3 tower, but Glyph's still available on the Pinoy side. Musica dropping fairly low to this harassment, but gets healed back up a little bit. He's now going to lay into the tower once more, popping the battle trance. They're going to disrupt him, get a couple of trolls on their side, and he will now go into melee form, continues to swipe. He either runs now or he's got to pop that Aegis immediately, and it sh seems running will be the choice, as Mighty Savior was on the split push once more. Well, entirely just kind of steady, rock-solid, high-ground sieging play coming out of CSW. They're going to have their Aegis timeout, which is the kind of slight concern, so if they, they can't really go for that same move without the Tinker having the Aegis on the front lines, it feels like, because otherwise he just gets jumped and burst down. I yeah. haven't quite got that good save. I guess the Shadow Demon, if he's fast on disruption, could potentially get the save off, but he needs a Blink or a Full Staff, and Full Staff is actually just about to be picked up, so that's the, the good news for 3-4-3 three, three on that Shadow Demon. Looks like Godot is going to swap out a, a Centaur for an Alpha Wolf. Okay. It's a pretty tanky Alpha yep. Wolf. 1,000 health. Any damage you can get right now if you want to be sieging high ground. They're likely to wait for the next Roshan. 
Or at least try find pickoffs in the, in that time. This is like a good opportunity to maybe go for Ruh -ruh. a smoke, get some map control. They want to set up bottom. You know, it's not often that a Shadow Demon can walk around himself and threaten kills, but with a Tinker and that Soul Catcher, he most certainly can. Fortunately, there was a Wisp there, so no real danger for Arcanus. Not losing their base just yet. They are farming. They have a potent late game, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough here. They need that. It feels like they need that big comeback fight w that you often see with Spectres where enemy team over ex extends. Maybe he has to buy back and haunt in, get four or five kills, and suddenly has his next tier four item. But for now, he's he's slowly working towards the Chen, get a split push. He'll bring the army back, and narrowly they escape the wrath of the Bristle. Yeah, for CSW, it seems just keep all the lanes pushed out. It will make it almost impossible for Arcanus to contest the next Roshan, which is still a couple minutes away, but... With lanes pushed out, they're kind of getting good efficient farm. The chain creeps kind of push out the top lane, push out mid, and also it forces Arcanus to split defend lanes, which opens things up for that pick-off to happen. That's where Beastmaster will be looking around the map for that raw, but for now, Beastmaster in his jungle, almost, well, about a hyperstone away from Assault Career, so that's going to be the next big item for 2D as well. That's a big item for Beastmaster. In theory, if this hero just farms, he actually farms pretty well with the Wild Axes, but... That's just not how the heroes normally played. So to, to get this, he's got to be active involved, and lordy has he ever. 6, 2, and 15. Very impressive showing here from 2D in the offlane. Yeah. Compare it to, I think it was a Tidehunter he had last game, which just, or uh, yesterday, which was just a total disaster for the team. This is much more to his liking, and it just goes back to the laning stage. He had a much easier time. Yeah, they're all getting the, the items they need for the high ground siege too. Now your troll's got a Scotty, so more stats, more survivability, more ability to fight should I kind of engage in him. Chen's even just dropping centaurs for more ancients. Gets the big black dragon, which is just a sieging creep. This thing doesn't really do too much in a fight. Doesn't really do that much damage, but it's just a creep you can have hitting a tower bit by bit. That's never going to die. Yeah, 2.3 KHP, magic immunity, and then you heal it up back to full with the hand of God as well. So it's just a good creep to poke at towers with. Uh, to combine with the troll wall. I think on one range. granite golem and then just three dragons is probably your, your ideal composition of ancients. Yeah. I think, oh, you can only get three ancients, I guess. But, oh, yeah, that's true. But yeah, you, having like a second dragon as well is fine. Even a second golem, but yeah, either dragons or golems, whichever one you find. And then, hey, alpha wolf, maybe? <laughs> Do you need a centaur this game? I don't, I don't think so. Alpha wolf's Dang. a little squishy. Hitting a center stun is just a big if right now, as far as Arcanus having to push far, really far forward. You don't really have a setup apart from the Beastmaster Roan. You're not looking to the, the to the Chen for stuns, and you're not looking in general as far as having a lack of damage. You're much more playing around the just the, the siege. Let's move towards Roche, but don't really find too much there. Get get down just a ward near the Roche pit, but something which can be easily dewarded by Beastmaster's Hawk. Operation, rescue Chen creep, success, and into Roshan we go, it's going to be respawning any second now, they see the Observer, they also see the Roche respawn, that's handy. Really good timing here for CSW with the troll ult, this Roche, not long for this world, Arcanus, really not, and they could contest this, but if they blow their haunt and don't win the fight, that is at least one, probably two lanes of Rax. Mm -hmm. So it seems they may not want to risk it. No, never mind that. They're going to haunt in. Take her from the high ground. Trying to rocket these illusions. Bring them down fast. Godot as a hand of God. Holding it for a while. Will end up falling. In the meantime, Heinrich brought down. As well as Dave getting bashed to bits by Musica. Still at full Roche HP. Roche going to Arcanus. And your Spectre. Well, does it matter though? This troll's coming back into the pit here in just a few moments. And he's going to start going to work. Musica chopping through them all. Use your cheese, bring them all down. Use your cheese. Uh, Jesus used just in the nick of time as Heinrich joins the fray. Spectre scurrying, running for his life. Oh, Heinrich has bought back for this one and looks to re-engage. Could be chain stun and brought down the Spectre. Gonna die even through the ages with a heart. Harder, no heart. You can't stand against Musica. Beast mode from the troll. He just ran at heroes and right clicked them and they could yeah. not deal with him. Once you run out of, like, you lose your Venge, your Lockdown, you use your big spells, your Haunt, your Sonic Wave. Suddenly Tinker, if he doesn't die during that, he went back to base and comes back in, he's got full HP and mana again. He just triple hexes a Spectre, down goes your Spectre. If Queen of Pain stay ne stays near, it's Queen of Pain getting triple hexed and brought down. That's where Tinker shines in those really long drawn out fights where you use your big, big, big spells, your big cooldowns, and suddenly there's no answer to a Tinker. So, chains up to, well, 5k-ish gold, gets a Dagon too, has 13 Bloodstone charges, he's now got a lot of solo kill potential on top of 
what he offers in a team fight. Musica also almost up to his next big item. 4,400 gold. Queen of Pain ult comes out. Barely tickles the mighty ancient granite golem. Dave will. Uh oh. Dave able to get off that stun. Still, though, he's roared. And in comes Musica, chopping his way through him. Defensive relocate comes out. Chains marching in, drops the missiles. Now the follow up march gets spammed, and Bach will find it increasingly more difficult to jump in and take this fight. They need to take it soon, though. A massive army, the zoo, has arrived. It's a very dangerous one to fight into. Too much march, too much. Once you get to the high ground with double, triple march, fighting into that, Queen of Pain blinked forward once and lost like half HP to the double march spamming. They're not, they're not even going to wait. They've got a battle trance ready. Nothing to wait for. Mm. Let's go for round two. This is a good timing to be going for this. Sonic Wave just trying to delay things up. and. This W gonna smoke and loop around, try find a pickoff. Raw not up just yet. Blink Hex to start it off. Now Musica to follow it up, gets the bash. There is no relocate this time around. Hot coming out, but doing little. Everybody stands together. Bach now bashed and beaten down, and Musica hardly even getting scratched by this one. They'll bring down your Bristleback, chasing forward onto the Wisp, onto Dave. And they can do nothing but head for the hills. The man fights going CSW's way more and more. They will buy back on the Bristle. But we saw how easily he melted. And they can just look oh, to do it again if he sticks back around. In now. They can't run past Musica. In fact, he's just going to jump in onto three heroes. Continues to slice the dice. 2D may fall, but Musica healthy, surviving. He'll bring down a Spectre. He'll bring down Bach with the help of Chains at his side. It's a monster kill for Musica. A godlike streak for that Tinker who blinks in, gets off the Hex, TPs out. It'll be another lane of Rex here, guys. This is after... Three buybacks on uh, one buyback on each core. That Dagon being leveled up more and more uh -oh. as Chains is going to hunt Mighty Savior. <laughs> he prays for mercy. He gets none. Arcanus going to be forced to GG out. Convincing win here from CSW. Yeah, that their mid to late game play was just really perfect. The early game was a bit shaky, but that seems to be kind of a trend when we've seen these Tinker picks that the Tinker. Especially against these Queen of Pains. It's the second time we've seen the Tinker against the Queen of Pain, and that's just a matchup these Tinkers are struggling with. Just it's by nature, it's a, a lane which a Tinker isn't going to do well in. But the comeback potential is there, and we just didn't really see the the Spectre do enough, even with the the decent timing on the Radiance. Again, going back to the draft, not to harp on it too much, but it felt like obviously we've seen Spectre can really counter Tinker, yeah. but. You have to have a draft that suits the Spectre. And it felt like the support just wasn't there. The Wisp Vengeful Spirit duo didn't do a whole lot. We saw the Wisp do a little bit with the Bristleback in the offlane, but they did not secure the Spectre's farm. And then when he got it, it was because they were busy taking other objectives. Still in the mid game, it felt like Arcanus had their chances, even with a, a bit of a weak landing stage. But yeah. a couple of lost fights, CSW with the Troll Chen. All of a sudden, you're taking all the structures, you're threatening high ground. Yeah, it feels like they have to either draft around the Spectre or draft something else for their carry, because. Yeah. I still think Storm could have yeah. been a great choice here. Yeah, Storm or something physical damage with the Vans. The other big thing is Spectre just generally not good against Chen because the Spectre damage is very much like AoE spread damage with Radiance, Dispersion. Chen with Mech and an Axe Hand of God just... Everyone was kept alive. You couldn't really bring down a squishy support. Shadow Demon as well just tanked up with Strength Threads, has defensive disruption, so... There weren't any easy kills for the Spectre Queen of Pain to get. They had to use their Sonic Wave and Horn and everything just to kill like a Chen or a Shadow Demon.